So I believe the city update for the in the fire in, uh, occurred in Wellington Street. Uh, as of present, we have uh, 38 adults, uh, 14 children, one baby that uh, have been displaced. A uh, total of 16 houses affected. Uh, there are six houses that are completely burnt out, and the rest some two partially damaged. The rest have smoke and soot damage. So we're trying to get that started out. Uh, from the get-go, we had the assistance of the Resilience and Reintegration Unit of the Ministry of People Empowerment, who would accommodate all persons that requested accommodation on the night. That number continues to increase because there are persons who thought they could stay inside with the smoke and then realized the smoke was too much. So they reached out. They've been accommodated. Up to this morning, there was a guy who, one of my team members, he said that he wanted to stay with his brother, but he indicated to me that he did not say so. He, so he needs, he's the last person that we need to accommodate as of today, and we are, we are working on that as we speak. So in present, in terms of accommodation that the, the government, through People Empowerment, has accommodated thus far, we have 30 adults, 10 children, and the one baby is in accommodation. Uh, they're being provided for uh, every level that you could imagine. Uh, from counseling, breakfast, lunch, dinner, food, everything is being uh, provided at this point in time for them. As we speak, the reintegration unit, uh, they're conducting site visits to see where we can find medium term housing for them to transition out of the emergency housing the government has provided. The emergency housing that government has provided is at Savannah and name the yeah, other two uh, hotels. Right, it's, it's, is Savannah Hotel and Golden Sands. Those are the two hotels that we're using right now for the emergency housing. Okay, and when will they have to be transitioned out? When the government finds a suitable medium term housing, not a second before. Yeah. One of the other things um, we would like to highlight is obviously to thank the Barbadians and the companies who've reached out to, to assist. Um, I, I don't ever want to start a meal and leave out someone, but I know the first one to reach out was Simplex. And obviously the fundraising committee of, of the city of Bridgetown, Barbados Civil Party branch, they kicked into gear to start to reach out to companies to ensure that uh, we can get the donations in the St. Ambrose Church as well. They, they've come uh, on board to help collect things, Jabez House. Um, they're committing as well. Hmm? Hmm? You gotta say it louder, can? Right, um, savvy as well, savvy on the bay. Uh, so a number, a number of companies, a number of individuals are, are reaching out, and it's really flowing. In. Um, one of the things I like to remind people is that they're short, medium, and long term. My experience with the past five fires have really been the short term is really easy. A lot of people give a lot of clothes and food which is needed, but there's a lot of assistance that are needed in the medium and long term as well. I just want uh, people to keep that in mind and continue to keep the families in prayer, in mind, and for all Barbadians to, to rally and do what we can do in this desperate time of need. There's no disputing that the city, when there are fires, are always calling in question as it relates to the emergency response. Uh, did you, as MP for the city, have any issues with the response by the emergency personnel? Right. My understanding of it, uh, doing my own research, is that there's an international response time, and the guys were there within the international response time. Uh, obviously, there could always be there could always be room for improvement. Uh, when I got there, the first house was on fire because I got the call. When I checked my record, I got a call before the fire service received their official call. And that happens, that happened about two or three of my fires where I as MP was called before the fire service. So when I got there, there was one, um, one tender there and another one arriving. And what I did at the time is I reached out to the chief fire marshal who was um, out on duty leave. I got the deputy and I asked him to hit me with everything he got. And then there were other tenders that came on um, after that. Um, I think that the guys did the best that they could under the circumstances and one of the things that we continue to do and they're working with the Ministry of Housing and the Government of Barbados is to help reduce the densely populated nature of the city. And how we're doing that, for example, in Greenfield, as you will see we have some transitional houses opposite Allen Court. And what we are in the process of doing or pushing Ministry of Housing to do is really, or working with them to do, is to remove sections of Greenfield, put them in the transitional housing, rebuild the area, in a more appropriate way for the 21st century, move the people back in and then transition another set. So we're actually going to have to set up multiple projects like that to be able to reduce all the densely populated areas, particularly in the city of Bridgetown. Any response to the fire hydrants? Rather, the question should be, the challenges that were faced during that fire are during city fires in general, as MP that you've been seeing, seeing that this is your fifth fire. Right. I think the, the, the challenge really is that one of the things I would like to see is uh, emergency personnel training being given to residents so that they can respond time the fire gets there. When they got there, they turn on residents. I did hear people talking about 
uh, the, the difficulty in finding red, uh, hydrants, getting them open and so on. I didn't witness that myself, but if that's a concern, every second counts in a fire. Because at one point, I remember the wind blowing really high, and then by, by two, two, two more houses were on fire just like that. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing since the first and second fire, they were a week apart. If you remember, it was the 17th for January 2022, and then the 24th for January 2023. Uh, 2023, 2022, sorry. Um, one of the things we started to do was start to work with fire prevention. So we reached out for, for, for fire officers in Barbados Fire Service and Vision Firefighters, which is a charity. We've been doing walking through, giving information, sensitizing residents, donating fire alarms, fire blankets, fire extinguishers. One of the things we train to do now, uh, we started to do, I think they do they one or two workshops, the walkthroughs that we had. Uh, what, so we, we might be preventing it, but not fully. We want to eliminate it. So one of the things we want to do, actually, even when it does occur, is to have some hydrants within these areas that trained persons could access by having eight community members have a key or brick in case emergency type opening system so that they can start to fight the fire time the fire service get there so having to take three minutes or even eight minutes those three to eight minutes are being utilized wisely by members of the community so we want to have this debate about who will get there early the hydrants and so on obviously we've been pushing for the hydrants to be checked more regularly growing up as a boy I used to see it being done all the time uh, no i don't know what's really happening so we want to make sure that all the hydrants are clearly marked Residents are sensitized not to park on the, on the hydrants and all these different things. So when the fire officers come, they have easy access. They know where they are and they can get down to business out in the fire and saving people's lives and people's livelihoods.